machine. Hello and welcome back to Kimchi Robotics. Today I'm going to show you which software you need in order to successfully flash the programs onto your chips. There's just a few things that I want to show you so you don't get lost. So the program that we need is called WinAVR. It is a tool chain that's all wrapped up in a nice little package for you and it also includes Programmer's Notepad. Note that Programmer's Notepad does not work on Mac computers or Linux and you can actually use pretty much any any software you want. So if you need something else to work on your machine, go ahead and look that up. There's plenty out there. Just look for any sort of minimal uh, code. And it's called Programmer's Notepad because it's that's what it is. It's just Notepad, basically. You can save a, a C program file. You can save a .c file using pretty much any text editor software, even basic Notepad. What you really need, though, is the necessary tools in order to convert that. If you visit my website, I have a specific tutorial all written out. So if you need to look at that, go ahead and check that out. It'll make this a lot easier and it will also show you a little bit more about the GNU toolchain and how it converts your .c file that you're going to save and it's going to convert it into an ELF file and that ELF is going to be converted into a hex file and the hex file is what you actually attempt to flash through your USB programmer onto your chip. All right, so I have Google up here and I'm going to show you exactly what you're going to be looking for. I do have these links posted on my site, so go ahead and check that out. We're going to be looking for WinAVR. WinAVR is the package that you need and you can see I've already looked this up before. And you could just go to the link at sourceforge.net. That's the actual official one. You can see there's a few here. They're all pointing to the same place. I've checked them out. And here's the download page. You just click download and you'll notice that people complain that it overwrites your path. And this was actually back in 2015. I have never had a problem. I've never had a problem. This guy too. Look, this guy's never had a problem. I don't know what these people are doing. It, it didn't overwrite my path at all. I, I don't know what they're doing. This was released in uh, this was released in 2010. If you look at the files, you can look at uh, WinAVR modified. Last date it was modified was 2010, and it's got you know a lot of downloads per week. It's got you know 1,530 downloads per week. People are still downloading this, and it's still valid. It still works. That's it. It's a set it and forget it kind of thing. So you just click download. And if your download takes a while, just wait. It's a very old file. And SourceForge, I don't know what, sometimes it takes a long time to actually finish saving the file. Like I'll click save and then it'll just take forever. Also, if it's not working on your browser, try a different browser. I had problems with Chrome. For some reason, it would hang in Chrome and it wouldn't finish the download for like five minutes. I'd have to wait like two to five minutes and then it would finally download. So if you're having trouble with that, just try a different browser. I've had better luck with Firefox. That's just how it is. All right, so you'll see that I have it here. Uh, it's all downloaded and ready to go. You just click on that and it's gonna run you through the installation uh, process. It's very easy. You'll notice that they have tons of language options, which is great. They got Spanish, Greek, Hebrew, Indonesian, Italiano, Japanese, Korean, Kurdi, wow, uh, Macedonian, Mongolian, Norwegian, Polsky. Uh, they got all. They got everything. They got Russian. They got Thai. They got all of your languages that you need. So you can just select English, and it's got this very old-looking uh, blue background. You just click next. You agree, and then you pick your destination folder. So I can install it on my C drive because that's where you know everything for my AVR stuff my, my programming stuff I just keep it on there um, you'll notice it's only 262 megabytes and that's pretty small if you use a different program like Eclipse or Microsoft Visual Studio it takes a lot more space on your computer and Microsoft Visual Studio takes forever to boot up and like log in this thing it it's super fast like programmers notepad anyway so you just select that. Now this is the important part. I'm not going to actually 
reinstall it because I don't need to and I don't need to show you the bar of it actually installing it doesn't really matter just make sure you add directories to path this is the problem that people are having right with the path if you don't know what path is just type in path environment just type in path and then you go to environment variables this is the part that people are talking about that they have problems with and you can see that mine has system variables successfully added for the AVR32 home see when AVR you know 2010 this is when it was released that's the name of the the version it's the date it was released um, I have no problems and I don't know what these people are doing but I've installed this five times at least on three different machines both laptops and desktops and I've even reinstalled it this is the third time I'm making this video because I, I reinstalled it on my laptop you know successfully and the video just didn't turn out the way I liked it so I'm just doing this on my desktop but you can see the path is successfully added it should show up here and it did not clobber my path it didn't overwrite all my other path like these guys are saying so I don't know what they're doing I think it's a um, user specific thing like they're I think they have some sort of options that they set up and they don't know that they set that up that way you know when they were setting up some other program in order to make that work with their path environment again I'm not a Windows guy I, I don't know how to you know troubleshoot all that if you have problems Google it there's lots of people who have had problems so you know they'll help you out okay so you also notice there's install programmers notepad and you definitely want to do that that is the very minimal uh, program that I recommend you just click install alright so you should have it installed and that's the car that I want to buy eventually someday here's programmers notepad down here you'll see it right here but first we want to make sure that it's successfully installed to our system in Windows you just go to command prompt just type in CMD in the search bar and yeah that's the name of my computer and you can type in AVR dude if this comes up like this this means that you have successfully installed it onto your machine this means that you have successfully installed the tool chain again if you need more explanation about it you can check out my website you don't have to know exactly what's going on but my website has a very summarized explanation for there you can see here they have different little commands here in the past we had to type all of this out on the command line so when we wanted to flash a program onto a chip we had to type in the baud rate, the bit clock, we had to type in the programmer type, you know, the, the name of our programmer. We had to type in the, the hex file name. It was a pain in the ass. Now, some really, really great people have developed uh, something called AVR Dude SS. So, AVR Dude plus SS. And I have a link for that on my website. You can t take a look at that. It's not my program, it's somebody else who has made a wonderful graphical interface version and here's the icon down here you can see it it looks like a little a little bug or something just click on that chip icon and there it is boom look at that look at that that is beautiful right all right so here it is this is a fantastic program so you don't need the command prompt anymore we can just use this graphical interface so first you have dash c and you notice dash c is up here in programmer right so that just means the programmer type now I recommend the USB Tiny Programmer is very easy to use and it's always worked. I've had trouble with the USB ASP. Uh, just use the USB Tiny that, that I recommend. The one that I like is from SparkFun. They also have one from Adafruit. I like SparkFun's website better so you know that is what it is. And SparkFun I didn't have to solder anything. I just got the pieces and you know boom it was done. So you can see all of these here. All of these. And mine's USB tiny and the port is going to be the USB port because it's connected through USB the baud rate you don't have to worry about that right now bit clock you don't have to worry about that right now this is the coolest part so when you when you connect your USB programmer to your actual chip here you can see I'm hooking up the ISP connector to you know different colored pins which I will put onto my chip I've colored the chip with red and black so you can see where pin 7 and 8 are that's where our voltage and our ground are going to be connected like I said in the previous tutorial so we have our reset pin our SCK our MISO and our MOSI all connected up correctly and now the coolest thing about this is when you 
plug this into any USB, boom, 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 there, see? You can detect the chip. So this is going to be like that's going to say select a microcontroller and it's going to be blank. After you connect up your after you hook up your AVR correctly to your programmer with the correct wiring, you just click detect. Boom, it detects what chip I have. That means your chip is ready to go. It's ready to be programmed. That is a very good sign. And it even detects all of the fuses. The fuses set uh, the clock speed. And remember in the first uh, video, the introductory video, I said that they come clock, clock from the factory at one eighth of the maximum speed. So they're one megahertz instead of eight megahertz. Later on, I can show you about, you know, the clock fuse bits and setting those. Basically, you can control the speed through these. And you're going to have to look it up on, on the web, on a website. And I'm going to show you how to do that later on when we actually program the chips. But just keep that in mind for now. So we have our programmer type, we have the port that we're going to be sending the data through between the computer and the chip, and we have our microcontroller detected. And then we just choose the correct hex file. So you can see here, I went into my, you know, I went into my AVR folder where I save all of my stuff for programming these chips. You can do anywhere you want. And every program, you should have a folder that is titled appropriately. And you'll notice I have the hex file right here. Okay, so my AVR dude, uh, the, the tool chain, the GNU tool chain um, with the GCC compiler, it all compiles it into several different files. And we only need the hex file really, okay? So you just click open and there it is. There's the path to that actual hex file. And then you just click program and that's it. All right, so you can see that I successfully wrote the program and then I read it back. It read it back just to make sure that it was written correctly. And if you do that, it means you did a good job. If it doesn't work, check your wiring. Always, nine times out of 10, 99.99999% of the time, it's gonna be that you didn't hook it up correctly to your programmer and it happened to me a lot, okay? So it's gonna happen to you a lot too. Double check your wiring, try to keep the colors all organized and so you don't get confused. And yeah, that's pretty much that. Um, it's going to be your wiring or your wires need to be, you know, swapped out for, you know, different ones. Sometimes my breadboard even was getting kind of loose, like the, the clips inside were loose. So I had to kind of like pull the wiring to the left or the right. So just keep that in mind. That can happen. All right. Now I'm going to show you programmer's notepad. I'm going to take you on a little quick little introductory tour. That's this icon right here. So here we have a blank sh slate. This is the same as Notepad, basically. It's called Programmer's Notepad for a reason. There is no difference between these, right? The great thing is Programmer's Notepad has a little bit more features and everything. You could write a C file in Notepad and just save it as a .c file as long as you, you know, format it, you know, appropriately and have everything in there. It's going to save it as a C file successfully. But the problem is you're going to need something else to convert it to ELF file, generate all the files that you need. Uh, to get that hex file and that's a pain in the butt so this does all that for you I'm not going to show you an entire C code in in this tutorial I'm just going to show you you know a brief overview the one thing you're definitely going to need to know is to change is how to change the color scheme that was the most annoying thing yours is going to be white I don't like white it's not good on the eyes and yeah it's really annoying especially when you're trying to find errors it just there's something about a white screen and coding that does it just doesn't mix. Plus, it doesn't look cool, right? So go to schemes. You can change your font. You can change the size. I like. I prefer really big, like 16 or 18. The background, okay? You can see right here. Boom! I just changed the background. Okay, that's horrible. Oh, my mama might slap me. All right, change it back to black. Text color can be white. Cursor color green. You can do whatever you want, okay? Also, if you go to styles, you'll notice there are these things. So if we if we type comments, right, in C code, you type comments like this, okay, or like this. If you want to do a multi-line comment, you just do multi-line like this, and bada bing, bada boom, okay. Comments can be changed, like the colors. 
box comments, comments. You can change all of that stuff. All right, so make sure you have it selected as C. You can see, look, these are all the presets for all the different languages, okay? Pretty cool, right? It's already set up. And you can change all these. So if you're if you're developing, you know, if or if you're studying Python or, you know, some other kind of language if you want to do C++ or C# -sharp, there's a D language. Slap me silly. All right, there's tons of this stuff, right? Assembler, I don't know why you do that. If you are assembler, oh jeez, please no. Uh, you can basically select whatever you want. I just stick to C, C++, and that's my scheme for that. And you can change it. So each one you can change. Box comments, comments, um, line comments. You can change all of this stuff. And here it is right here. See? This is where you want to go. You want to go to advanced, and you can see my scheme matches uh, the top here. So if I changed it to you know C sharp, it could be different, um, and it would it would affect you know that preset. These are the presets, so make sure you don't get those mixed up. Okay, so you can see here we have comments. So I can change that to you know red, boom, see, and then if it's just a single line comment, I can change that as well comment line we'll change that to orange see pretty easy so th that's just all you need to know you you're gonna want to put all of your code and everything into one file so just put that anywhere you want on any drive and save it just make a name make a title like you know my programs or you know AVR programs or C programs whatever you want mine is just called AVR and you're gonna want to put all of your projects folders and files in that same umbrella file that same parent file okay so make a big file and then put all your projects in that file the reason you want to do that is if you start making header files and things like that your your compiler is going to need to be able to find all of those files that you're referencing okay like a header file is something that you just reference you're like, hey, I already built this function. Um, it's in this header file. So that means you don't have to write it all out again. It's a very light and clean way of um, reusing functions that you made. Uh, you know, it, it's kind of like a you know prefabricated thing. So you can use that for any other programs. But if you'd have it in some random folder on your computer, it's going to have a hard time finding that, and it's not going to be included in your program, and you may have compiling errors. So that's pretty much it for this tutorial. That's the programmer's notepad, the AVR dude SS or AVR dudes or AVR dudes, whatever you want to call it. Make sure you double check that you successfully installed AVR dude, right? AVR dude is what we actually installed the first time. Um, just type in AVR dude in your command prompt. Uh, there's a way to do it in Mac OS. I don't have a Mac machine. I'm not using a Mac machine and I have pity on you if you have a Mac machine. Um, it's okay. Don't feel bad. We all we all make financial mistakes. Shout out to Lewis Rossman. All right, so hopefully this was helpful for you, and I think you guys are going to be able to get it. it. Again, if you have problems, I can't troubleshoot everything. You are going to get it. If it doesn't work at first, just try to take a deep breath, try to reinstall it, figure it out. You're going to get smarter with each obstacle. That's why this hobby is so great. That's why you know computer hobbies in general are great. Everybody has to deal with a ton of troubleshooting. Seriously, that's what technology is. It's just continuous troubleshooting. But it gets easier as you go. And every time you do it, you learn something new. That's also why I suggest having a notebook. Like, have a notebook, record all your you know, discoveries, all your troubleshooting stuff, and you'll be better for it. So that's all for now. I will see you in the next one where we will start actually writing C code and we will be flashing it. Not the trench coat type, but moving actual code onto a chip and watching it work in action. Have a great day. I will see you very, very soon.